Hi, I want to provide some clarification on how to use R Markdown specifically for Lab 1 in Math 107 this year. After Lab 1, I saw that there were a lot of snags being hit, and it would be helpful for you to be able to hear a little bit more of my thought process behind R Markdown as well as a little bit more help getting up and running. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from the basics, assuming that we don't have an R project set up for labs and move through the beginning material that way. So I've logged into the RStudio server, and this is how my session looks when I first log on. And so what I want to do is I want to create a new R project specifically for labs. So I go up here to the top right, and there's this three-dimensional R, and it says Project None right now. And I can click on New Project. That'll open up a dialog box. I, I want to start a new folder for labs, so I'm going to click on New Directory, an Empty Project and I'm just going to call this lab. If you want to search for a different folder in which to store this, you can click on the browse button and navigate to the folder of interest. Next I'll click create project. And our, the R session is going to restart with that folder loaded as your active directory, which is really nice. Next I want to create a data folder, so I click on the new folder icon down in the Files, Plots, Packages pane. And I'm going to label that data, and I click OK. And now you can see that I have a data folder down there. And now comes the hard work of getting data into this folder, as well as getting an R Markdown template in. And I'm going to use the download.file uh, function in order to do this. And I'm going to do it one at a time. I'm going to get the data set in first. And so I need to find the URL of the data set. So I go to the Math 107 web page. And I'm just going to right click on the aimshousing.csv link. And I'm going to say copy link address. And then I go back to my RStudio session. I'm going to download dot file. And notice I need a URL. And then in quotation marks, so it's very important that you put this in quotation marks. I'm just going to copy and paste the URL of the data set in there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a destination file, which is called dest file. And this is going to be in quotation marks as well. So everything has to be quote in quotes here. It has to be specified exactly as you see on the screen. Now I've created a data folder with a lowercase d, so everything is very case sensitive too. To tell it that I want it to store in the data folder, I say data backslash, and then I'm going to give it a name. So it's currently the Ames housing .csv file, and I'm not going to change that. So notice how the last bit of the URL and the last bit of my data <coughs> or desk file specification are the same. I'm going to hit enter. And now it's going to go download that data set from the web. You're going to get a bunch of uh, red writing here. And it's going to tell you that it's saving to this and that in, in fact saved at the end. Don't worry about uh, other things. In order to check this as well, you can go to your data folder in the lower right pane, click on data. And now I see that file right there. So now I have my data for the lab stored in my data folder. <clears throat> the next thing I need to do is to download an R Markdown template. And so I'm going to use the download file option again. So download.file. And my URL here is given by bit.ly slash math107-lab1. And my dest file, I'm going to keep it in this folder out here so I don't need to change folders. So I'm just going to call this lab1. Dot rmd hit enter and it's going to work to download that file and what you'll see after you do this is that you get a lab1.rmd folder down here now be careful not to overwrite anything so if you already have a lab1.rmd file down here this would overwrite that so you might want to be very careful of that lab name okay so now i'm going to click on lab1.rmd to open up my r markdown file so this is the setup that I encourage you to use most often. You have an R Markdown file open and within your R project, and we're going to do everything within this Markdown folder or file. So now that you've gotten everything downloaded, let's see how we use an R Markdown 
file. So the first thing to notice is this header which is contained within two sets of three dashes. Now this is where you can put your title, which Lab Report 1 sounds pretty good. We can also specify authors here. Right now it's just generic. You should type in your names here. So I would type in Adam Loy. And today's date, I can type that in here. So right, that's September 19th, 2016. You can specify the date in any format. And then I'll click Save. Now let's just see how this knits. And so I'd recommend knitting to an HTML file you need PDF or Word, you might need to install other things, but you can just hit knit HTML. And it will work for a little bit, but then it will show up with this pop-up window, which is your knitted file. So this is going to be what your output looks like. So I'm going to go back to my main tab. If you can't get that tab, you're going to in require or you're going to need to enable pop-ups. Now that we've looked at our first knitted our markdown file we can see how we would actually want to work within our markdown folder. So what you're going to notice is that you can just really type text. The first thing to notice is when you use number signs or hashtags if you want to call them that that's going to give you some form of a title. The fewer number signs you use the bigger the font is going to be. And then you can really just type in text as you would in any word processing software. And so I've done that for some instructions using the caret here as a indentation for a quote. But now what you're going to see is that there's a setup chunk and that's where you can load all your R packages that you need for these labs and your homeworks. For now we're just going to be rendering plots and so ggplot making sure you have that working or in, in loaded, uh, you can do that through the library command. You also want to load your data set. And so I have another chunk loading the data set here. And what you're going to notice is that you're not actually running anything when you write code in here. So I could ask for some summary statistics for Ames housing, and nothing's going to happen. Additionally, I could ask to see the cup first couple rows of Ames housing using the head command. Or I could look at the structure using the str command. Now these two lines are going to print a whole lot so I'm actually going to comment those out and you're going to use number signs to say don't run these lines of code just print them but not the output. So we can leave the summary option here and then what you're going to see is I'm not actually going to run anything down here in my console what I'm going to do is I'm going to click knit HTML again it's going to work and then it's going to pop up the output. And so you can see exactly what's going on here. And so this is actually a workflow that I'd recommend is that you alternate writing code in your markdown file and knitting it rather than working in the console because then you don't lose anything. For example, let's tackle the, let's go up here and add a example plot from lab in. And so in lab we and I need a new R chunk to do this so when I want to include an R chunk I click on this green C and now I have a new R chunk. So the first thing you did in lab was create a histogram of the sale price of a home. So for example you have ggplot and you give it your data set name which is Ames Housing you give it a mapping and we only need to give it one variable here which is sale price in order to create a histogram then we needed to add a geom histogram layer and of course we could do a certain fill which was steel blue 2 on the lab uh, and you can change your bin width to something else so maybe you want this in tens of thousands of dollars. You can also change the labels so I'm going to change the X label here using this labs layer and so this is the sale price in dollars. And we can knit this to see what happens. Now when I click knit it automatically saves the file as well so this encourages really nice habits.
And as you can see, we have everything we've knitted before. And now I also have a histogram down here displayed below the code that I just added to this. So this is a really nice workflow, alternating between putting code in code chunks, writing comments, and knitting the file. So for example here, I could say down here, the histogram is skewed to the right. You could also say it's unimodal and other things, but let's see how that looks. So now you see my comment below that. And so this is a really good workflow. So what I've done here is I've created a template where I've given you code chunks where you can put your code here. So when you want to put your code there to answer a question, just delete all of that and type your code there to start with. You can also, of course, put more in here, but make sure your answers are there. And when it says write your solution here, you can just type something in there. So I hope this helps clarify how you can use an R Markdown file and that I really recommend just using R Markdown to compile everything. So you put your code in there, your comments, and then knit to HTML.